In this example, I want to show you several different ways to control the tool vector using the multi-surface tool path. So we have this part, it has all these dished openings and this little radius dish in three different areas going around the part. So we're going to go to our multi-axis tool paths. I'm going to go with the default name on this. And the tool path I want to use is multi-surf. It looks like the most logical because it looks like it wants to cut all the way around all the surfaces. So we're going to pick that. Our tool, we've got a three-quarter inch ball end mill. And for our cut pattern, you would think that the thing you want to cut is the actual surfaces that you're looking at. So we're going to do that first. I'm going to say select surfaces and I'm going to go to all and I'm going to pick color and I'm going to pick this greenish color. Okay, that entered in my selection. Now, multi-surf is basically a flow line toolpath. So it looks at the flow direction of all these different surfaces and they're going all over the place. It's trying to figure out the direction for the cut, the direction for the step, which side to be on, whether it's inside or outside. It's making its best guess at this point. And we're just going to say OK to that. Now when I cut this, I want it to do a one-way cut. I want it to cut around and then step down. I want my compensation type to be in computer. You can also adjust your step overs here, but for now we'll leave this set to a higher increment so it will calculate faster. For our tool axis control, we're just going to tell it that we want to control this by the actual pattern surface. So the surface that we're cutting is the same surface that it will use to determine the vector of the tool. Collision control, well for now we're not going to do anything in here. And Under linking parameters, I want to control the way it steps down along that surface. I don't want it to step by a distance because that's going to give me a bunch of retracts. I'll tell it to calculate this based on a percentage and I'll make that 2,000 percent of the tool diameter. So let's OK this. And now two things are going to happen. It's either going to create the tool path or it's not going to create the tool path. Because there's so many different directions for those surfaces, it may not know exactly what needs to be done here. In this case it says, flow line surface conflict found, tool path not possible. Now when I click OK, Again, it's going to do one of two things. It'll either calculate the toolpath or stop the operation. We're going to say OK. This time it gave me a toolpath. And the toolpath actually looks pretty good. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to a front view. So it's trying to match up with the vectors of these surfaces as it goes around. We actually did good this time. So I'm going to pick back plot and you'll see that as it's going around, the tool is perpendicular to the surface that it's cutting. As it gets around to the dished areas, you'll see it starts to change its direction. So the angle varies as it goes up and down around these surfaces. And when it gets to this area in particular, you can see how drastically it's pointed up. And that's OK. So this time, it did a pretty good job, and I'm happy with the toolpath. But if it didn't do the toolpath, what would we do? How could we control it? Well, I'm going to copy this operation down, and we're going to dig into the parameters for this toolpath. One way to control it is to change the actual cut pattern surface. So I'm going to go in here to select that surface, and I'm just going to reselect everything, and then unselect everything. I'm going to go to my level manager, and one thing I'm going to do is to uncheck where it says main level is always visible. I want to be able to turn off the main level because I want to turn on a level called cylinder cut surface. And I'm going to pick that as the item that I want to cut. Now that cylinder is completely contained inside of our part. I'm going to turn my model back on. OK this. Enter to end my selection. Now you can also turn off your shading to see your cut direction. So it looks like it's starting from the top, going around, and stepping down. So we're going to OK that. So now you're thinking, if we tell it to cut the cylinder, isn't it going to cut through the part? And that would be true, except we're going to use collision control functions to stop it from doing that. In here, I'm going to go to my collision control and select some surfaces. 
And to select my surfaces, I'm going to say All, and I'm going to grab that same color for my outer surfaces. Enter to end my selection, OK, OK here. I'll turn on my shading, and we'll regenerate. That also looks like a pretty good toolpath. Let's look at this from a front view and run this in backplot. Now as I move along, you'll see the tool is pointing directly away. It's pointing straight out in X and Y. There's no tilt to the tool at all because it's trying to point towards the cylinder that's inside of the part. But we told it not to violate these surfaces on the outside of the part. So these outer surfaces are as far as it can go. But as far as angle control, the angle is determined from the cylinder. Now when I get to the bottom here, you can see how the tool holder is so far below the edge of the part. Depending on your fixture, that may or may not be acceptable. So let's look at another possibility. I'm going to copy this down. We'll go back into our parameters and we're going to reselect our cut pattern. So let me turn off this part. So here's our previous cut pattern. It was a straight up and down cylinder. I'm going to unselect that by clicking on it. And then I'm going to turn on a shape down here that says hourglass cut surface. And I'll turn off my cylinder. Now, this hourglass shape is going to give me a vector pointing away from this surface as it cuts around the part. So when it gets to the dished areas, it'll be dished pointing in here and pointing in here. So I'm going to put a window around to select all of this. I'll turn my surface model back on. OK this. Enter to end my selection. It looks like it's starting from the top, but the cut direction is going up and down. So I'm going to change my cut direction so that it goes around, starts from the top, and works its way down. OK that. OK here and regenerate. Turn my shading back on and we'll take a look at this in back plot. Now you'll see it's tilting down a little bit to get inside of that dished area and as it gets to the middle it starts to tilt its way back up again because the toolpath is patterned off of that hourglass shape. Now it's tilting back up. But when it gets to the bottom it's still pointing almost straight away from this bottom edge. Let's make another copy. Go into our parameters and reselect our pattern surface. So again, I'll turn off my part surfaces. I'll put a window around to unselect that. I'll turn off the hourglass and I'll turn on a level that says cone cut surface. So now you can see if it's going to be perpendicular to this, that means that when it's cutting up in this area, it's going to be pointing in that direction. And as it cuts all the way down, it's going to be pointing out this way. Now when it gets down here, the vector pointing out will be a little bit more drastic, but that'll taper off a little bit as it gets to the bottom. And the bottom edge will be in relationship from this edge to what we're cutting. So let's select that as our next pattern surface. I'll turn my surface model back on. Enter to end my selection. Now this looks like it's cutting from the bottom. And again, you can turn off your shading to see that better. I can tell it to change my step direction so it's starting from the top going down. OK that. And regenerate. Now it's really hard to see the difference between some of these tool paths until you actually see the tool move in backplot. So again, let's do this. Now you can see we have a nice angle pointing up and away from the part. Still plenty of room for the ball to get into these undercut areas. And as it moves down, it even angles up a little bit further until it gets to the bottom and it evens out a little bit. But you'll notice even at the bottom, the tool is still angled up and away from the surface that we're cutting. So it's all the same tool path, but by putting a different guide surface underneath the part, you can completely change the way the tool is vectored for the final cut.